Welcome to the Gentleman Scholars Club, where we deliver quick hit knowledge on men's style topics not covered extensively elsewhere. In today's video, we'll be comparing the Ray-Ban Clubmaster sunglasses with Kent Wong's Browline sunglasses. First of all, let me say that I'll be pronouncing Kent Wong closer to the Chinese pronunciation rather than the English or Anglicized pronunciation of Wang. Kent Wong is a person, and it's also a company that's very popular online with guys who appreciate good quality menswear on style forum and more widely. I would say Ken Wong is most widely known online for their polo shirts, their wide range of interesting and artistic pocket squares, and their made-to-measure suits, sport coats, and outerwear. They're also well known or renowned for their excellent customer service. Today, however, we'll be looking at their sunglasses and specifically the brow line style. Brow line originated in mid-century America as a style primarily for regular glasses rather than sunglasses came to the public's attention in the 80s with the hit TV show Moonlighting, where Bruce Willis's character wore them, which kickstarted Ray-Ban's Clubmaster model. Browline is a popular sunglass style to wear with tailoring because it has a classic appeal to it, especially in the tortoiseshell frame, which is a classic material originally made out of real tortoises, similar to ivory, um, so it has that sort of artisanal tradition behind it. And it has a refined look and an impression of quality craftsmanship that's consistent with the traditional menswear aesthetic. If you wear aviators or other styles, they may be too sporty or casual alongside tailoring such as a sport coat or a suit. So having that, those extra details and that sort of uh, replica artisanal material gives uh, the tortoise shell brow line sunglasses in particular, uh, classic men's wear appeal. It's also the black brow line version, which uh, is also good if you wanted to fade back a little bit more uh, from what you're wearing or if you're wearing something in complementary colors like gray. Uh, the brown brow line sunglasses are particularly good for something like navy and also other brown tones, tobacco linen, brown tweed, and so forth. Black, again, I would say it goes with charcoal. It could go with navy as well, um, and lighter grays as some examples. To be honest, I shied away from the Clubmaster style because everyone on social media in the hashtag menswear resurgence of classic style seemed to wear them. And they therefore had a certain uniformity or conformity, which I try to avoid uh, because that, that tends toward fashion more than timeless style. Um, I saw them in a broader context, though, in some film and TV adaptations, one of which was the UK TV series Father Brown, which is set in the 1950s. Uh, again, kind of the era when the brown line shape was first popularized, and it was worn in that series by the gentleman thief Flambeau, and uh, he was very sartorially interesting in terms of what he wore. And the brow line contributed to that look, and it did look good there. The other was a Chinese TV drama called Dare You to Love Me, in which the male protagonist, uh, an academic or professor, also was a profiler, uh, criminal psychologist, wore them in a number of scenes. Ultimately, your choice of the, the club master or the brow line shape depends on your own face or head shape and your facial features. And there is another video in our series uh, that talks about sunglasses style and face shape. So compare apples and apples as we have here two tortoiseshell versions of the sunglasses. These are the Kent Wong versions. And these, as you can see by the branding, is the Ray-Ban version. In terms of size, these are 50 millimeter lenses, whereas the Ray-Bans here are 49 millimeters. So one millimeter difference, but I think if you look at them side by side, you can see uh, you can see there that they're slightly smaller. The uh, Ray-Bans are slightly smaller. Um, as I said earlier, Ken Wong also makes black brow lines, as does Ray-Ban. Ray-Ban also makes a 51 millimeter, so that would be one millimeter larger than these. Um, so it depends, again, on your face shape and what you prefer in terms of coverage, 49 50 or the larger 51 from Ray-Ban. In terms of the color, you can see here in the, the tortoise shell that this one is brighter and lighter, contains more yellow. See the reflectivity or the transparency there of the, uh, the tortoise shell. 
whereas in the Ray-Ban, the frame is more brown and more muted. Uh, there's, there are a few spots here, here, here of uh, lightness, but for the most part, it's almost a uniform brown. So if you want more of a low-key set of sunglasses that fades back, uh, the Ray-Bans might be a good choice. If you want a bolder and brighter version, then Kent Wong could be your choice. Taking a look at the back here, uh, similar, similarly, the, the uh, difference in color or shade carries over. You can also see the difference in the lens color. This one has more of a bluer cast, uh, this being the Ray-Bans. You see the blueness that shows up there. Uh, this one is more green in terms of lenses. I think both are listed as being green, but this, as you can see, has a greater blueness, more blueness to it. In terms of the construction of these, uh, the Kent Wong are constructed with spring hinges in the arms. So it has that firmness to it, uh, but also feels like it's quality construction, as you can see here in the hinge. There's that spring quality. Now the Ray-Ban, also firm, but don't feel as smooth in terms of opening and closing. Um, I don't know if they have spring arms. They don't seem to have the same springiness as the Kent Wong. So in that department, uh, the Kent Wong seemed to win out. Um, the lenses here also branded for Ray-Ban. It's uh, typical that they have uh, their name imprinted on the edge. Kent Wong does not emphasize branding. And if you don't want to be, uh, if you don't want to have conspicuous consumption, um, that is a good choice. And I don't think there's any branding at all. Um, just down here on the arm, on the inner arm, uh, you might be able to see that it says uh, kentwong.com, but not conspicuous at all. So uh, I prefer that actually again over carrying the Ray brand. Uh, Ray-Ban and being a, a walking advertisement for the company. Looking at the metals, um, the Ray-Ban glass, uh, the Ray-Ban gold seems to be uh, yellower than the Kent Wong. Can swap them over here. Uh, they're roughly the same, I would say. Actually, no, they're slightly yellower. Um, as you can see in the top version, there is more of a yellow to that frame. Uh, Ray-Ban also have uh, additional gold detailing on each of the brown lines at the edge, and the Kent Wong do not have that. Uh, perhaps the brightness of the tortoise shell already uh, carries the frame or the brown line, whereas because these are more muted, um, they decided to add, for design purposes, uh, those gold lozenge shapes. Both of these lenses are polarized, and that's where the price difference also comes into play and becomes a consideration. The Ray-Bans are usually around $200, over $200 from Ray-Ban themselves for the polarized lenses at a gray market site, which are legitimate legal products just sold outside of the usual supply chain. You might be able to find a polarized Ray-Ban for between $128 to $150. And I got these from this site called a Joma Shop. J-O-M-A. Uh, they sell watches and sunglasses, among other things. Uh, again, legitimate products at uh, discounted prices. So the cheapest I could find was $128. Kent Wong sunglasses are $55, and they're always polarized as well. So definitely can't compare there. Um, you can get two to four Kent Wong sunglasses for the price of one Ray-Ban. And if you think about uh, another brow line, a popular brow line maker, which is uh, Persol, uh, their Polaroid sunglasses are around $360, $367. So you could actually get six or seven pairs of Kent Wong for the same price. So if price and value are uh, something you're interested in, you want polarized lenses at uh, the same price or even less than non-polarized Ray-Bans, uh, definitely Kent Wong wins out there. Going back to the idea of customer service that Kent is known for, uh, these shipped really fast. I ordered them at 7.50 in the morning. They shipped around noon, and I got uh, multiple updates for when I first ordered and again when they shipped, and they arrived with uh, equal swiftness. Um, I ordered the Ray-Bans a few days before Kent Wong, and they arrived on the same day. So the shipping uh, was quick uh, by USPS, 
and also quite reasonable. Uh, in addition to fair pricing for all of his products, um, Kent doesn't have artificially escalated costs or es escalated prices and then puts things on sale. He always maintains the same pricing throughout the year. And uh, that carries over to the shipping, which is also, again, quite fair. Uh, the only difference is that you will get a Ray-Ban hard case if you order from Ray-Ban. Uh, Kent Wong, you will likely get a soft case or soft bag, and it depends whether that uh, is important to you. Certainly buy hard cases elsewhere, not necessarily from Ray-Ban. So those are the essential features comparing the two glasses. If you have questions, feel free to let me know. And again, take a look at our video um, on sunglass types and face shape. Thanks for watching.